Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today we're talking about Into the God's Grave from Lucky Duck Games. Into the God's Grave is a one to four player app driven exploration uh, cooperative experience. A whole lot of things going on here. Let's talk about everything. But starting off the bat, this is a prototype, all rules and components subject to change. And right now I have things set up that are very uh, spoiler free. This is the intro setup to the very first scenario. Nothing really here spoilers once you've played this for uh, about 30 seconds. But past that, like I said already, this is an app. Oh, and I'll have a link to the crowdfunding campaign down below. Make sure to check that out and all that good stuff. But past that, let's go ahead and dive into this. This is an app driven game for one to four players. It's a cooperative experience experience in which players are going through a sequence of adventures. Uh, I don't have a specific a fixed number, but uh, supposedly around 10 or more than 10 adventures you're going to be going on. I can't speak for the rest of them because I only have access to the uh, very first scenario that I've played through. First scenario took me a little over an hour and a half to complete, and so assuming the rest of them are somewhere in that range, you're talking about a minimum of 15 hours or content or so. But again, I've only played the first scenario, which is also why I said we're talking about it and not reviewing it. This will be a first impressions of my experience so far. Obviously, I need to play it more to properly give a you know fully formed opinion to that end make sure to stay tuned down the road when the retail copy arrives all that stuff but for right now let's talk about the game this is an app-driven adventure. In the game, you're going to be using this app over here, and you're going to be having the app run various points of interest. This is a system that's going to be very familiar to those who have played Destinies. In fact, it's going to be very hard to talk about this game without referencing some elements of Destinies throughout. Although, I would say that it's not so much that this game is Destinies, it's very, very different, but rather it uses some same mechanical interfaces and structures. So it's a Destinies, it, this game is Destinies the same way Ascension is Dominion, meaning there's similar constructs and mechanics that give you a, a same vibe of the experience, while being very different beasts. With that said, if you have played Destinies, very similar app driven construct, you can go ahead and interact with various things, visit the bottom look, gob, bottomless goblet in, have conversations, make choices around those things. Many of those choices will involve making skill tests, and when you make a skill test, you're going to have your, your dice that you have for your race over here, so the elf's going to be rolling these three dice on their skill tests, and then different skill tests have different successes in them automatically, but you also have successes for the color of the skill test. So right now, if you're rolling a blue skill test, you can possibly roll a die, and there we go, that got one, two, three successes for a blue skill test but if you were rolling a green skill test it got two more for a total of five skill tests for five successes basically the color of the dice are better in the skill test that you're trying to perform from those three different colors but they can be used for anything as far as driving successes there's a lot of ways you can add uh, add dice to your skill test. You're going to have cards in your hand. The cards are going to be a few different things, but one of the things is the corner of the card can be used to discard that card to enhance the number of dice you're rolling in the skill test. That's aside from the fact that you're going to have ability cards that go below your board over here and give you various ongoing abilities. You're going to have items such as various gear and equipment and like you know necklaces and armor that will go above your board, again, giving you different ways to interact with the experience. And then you'll have events, which are effectively one-time use cards that will in some way give something. Maybe you found some gold, maybe you're modifying the result of a skill test. A whole bunch of different events in the game that can in some way interact with your experience. What are you trying to do? Well, that's going to vary scenario by scenario. The very first scenario, the only one I have access to playing, involves you escorting a wagon, and you have seven turns to escort the wagon successfully to the end of the scenario, or alternatively, you're going to lose. You'll have to go through that, and then things will happen along the way, which we won't get into because spoiler-free and all of that, but it's basically an escort quest as you try to deal with the various world around you. You're going to be exploring regions of the board. You're going to have these tokens on the board that indicate an unexplored region, and when you move into that region, you can try exploring it, at which point things will show up. New tiles will be placed down, various enemies may or may not appear, new points of interest will appear, all of which you can engage with by, again, going to the app and tapping on the various things that show up. Again, I don't want to tap on anything because I don't want to ruin your experience in any way, but the basic idea is you have a world, you have a goal that you're trying to achieve, and you're trying to interact with the world around you, spending and managing your resources, attacking various enemies, managing your health pool so you don't actually die along the way, all while you attempt to accomplish the scenario goals. That's the basic idea. Everything else kind of comes down to the details. You're going to have your items over here. You can have, once you have an item, a weapon, it effectively gives you a way to fight different enemies. You're going to have your various, you know, unique item, unique ability over here for your character. You're going to have the stats, or your health, and your, that. You're going to have all the cards that, you, that give you a ton of different effects they have on them. There's going to be a system of planning every single round. That's an important part, where every single round, you're going to start by determining what plan you're using for the round. That's going to give you an ability for the round, how much resources, cards, and movement you get for the round for each character in the game, as you try to figure out how to, uh, you know, make your way through this engine trying to defeat the various enemies, accomplish your goals, and just not die along the way. 
the game will escalate it by giving you various things that happen along the way, uh, both a, a kind of a timer on the game, as it were, in the sense that as you explore things, things will happen, but also time is a mechanic in the game as well. Every single round, there are things happening. Again, I don't want to go into details, but anything from weather to enemies to who knows what will be happening along the way as you encounter this experience. And that's basically what's going on here. That's what Into the God's Forge is. Into the God's Grave, not God's Forge. Into the God's Grave is a story-based system as far as there's an overall story behind it, but I would say that this is more mechanically driven than narratively driven. There is interacting with the various characters, uh, seeing various lost people along the way, uh, but mostly this is a 10 ish scenario arc in which you're going to just go through scenarios you're going to be building and augmenting your deck in between scenarios again this is something i haven't been able to see myself yet but as you go through the game you're going to find various items and also in between scenarios you'll have the ability to craft and adjust your decks in different ways so it can be a degree of deck building that i haven't been able to see just yet but that's into the god's grave one to four player campaign app driven uh cooperative experience for one to four players which brings into my uh review ish first impressions ease of play on this one is very easy rule book was uh, very much a prototype rule book it's not properly formatted all that it's a uh, written in you know ward and all that but for the most part it's very easy to go through very easy to get up and running very few questions this is a quick and simple game to get up and running but not a quick and simple game just compared to the other systems that i know there's enough information here that you can jump into this one and get up and running fairly quickly uh, you're going to be managing the enemies from the app and all that stuff so it's going to have systems similar to descent similar to uh not necessarily destinies other systems have uh you mentioned madness you're gonna have enemies in the app that you're managing by sort of having a combination of things on the board and things in the app but it's going to be run partially by the device itself and partially by your knowledge of these systems in play but overall gets you up and running fairly quickly uh, as far as the game length i've only played the one game and like i said already it comes and it comes in at around an hour and 45 minutes or so and that's only one session i have no idea the average length of the session i don't even know if my my length was longer or shorter than usual so i can only speak to the one scenario i've played through but that's going to be as far as uh, game length which brings to my impressions which is where we're going to break from my normal format rather than talking about what i like don't like and conceal is not liking i'll just talk about my experience this is going to be comparable to destinies and again on a high level for sure lots of differences but there are similarities at play there's going to be the way you have things managed in the app and on the board, the way you start by spawning something here, but then it moves around the board in the system. There's going to be the way you have points of interest, the, the ways you have skill tests. All these those things are going to be shared as similarities, but there's going to be a lot of differences. The way the skill tests are managed, I drastically prefer. I like this system of dice much more than, so than Destiny's. I found Destiny's to be a very clever system. I like Destiny's, make no mistake, but Destiny's system of how you manage skill tests was clever, but this just feels almost just more fun. It's just more fun to be able to roll handfuls of dice here, and there are more ways to roll handfuls of dice. I enjoyed going through the skill tests, and you fail enough of them, or at least I failed enough of them, that passing or failing a skill test is a meaningful thing. But also, when I failed, it never felt like the game was over. It felt like I failed a skill test, and that's fine. It's okay. I never felt the need or the urge to manipulate a die to adjust something in my favor. I could deal with the consequences, and I can get through it just fine. The skill tests were, were fine. As far as how often I pass them, I probably pass them like maybe 65, 70% of the time, which means I still pass them often enough that overall it was a good experience where I felt like I was getting things done. And then here and there, there was a failure that was like, this is not the time to miss that shot. This is not the time to miss that enemy. The enemies are, are easy enough to defeat. Again, first scenario only, but the enemies overall were easy enough to defeat that it was not a punishingly challenging experience, but also difficult enough to defeat and deal with that it was, it was a challenging experience it was a definite degree of trying to optimize around the game state i won't spoil as to whether i won or lost but i will tell you whether i won or lost it was close you can watch my full video i'll have a gameplay video of that session you can check it out again i won't spoil what happened but i will tell you that it was close if i won it was by the skin of my teeth and if i lost i almost won one of those two things happened that's the uh, degree of spoilers i'll give you the overall game system feels rewarding you're managing a lot of resources in the game. You're managing your resources that you're going to have on your character. And you're trying to figure out how to use those resources on the, the various cards you're trying to use. And cards are beneficial in a variety of ways because you have to discard cards for extra dice for skill tests, which you want to accomplish. It'll make your life easier. But also being able to put permanent abilities or uh, items in play or even just using events for their ability will also be very impactful and very helpful. And so there's a trade-off there, but you also have limited resources. So you're managing multiple limited economies. In fact, every single skill test you make in the game is driven by the fact that you're going to get two free skill tests every single turn and past that you need to gather these advantage tokens where two of those can trade in for a skill test and so you're usually running two skill tests a turn with the ability to occasionally have a third or fourth thrown in especially if you save those tokens for the right moments and so you're managing multiple economies in this game from movement to resources to cards to skill tests all while you and time time is a big factor this one scenario is time limited in what you do you have a limited amount of time to actually accomplish the scenario goals and it's challenging to do all this there are a lot of decisions to be made along the way as far as how you work together with the various characters at the table or 
if you're controlling both characters yourself as you go through it. There's a lot of management as far as how you're going to try to drive this experience, and there's a decent amount of decision space. So even, even the plans you play every single round, there's a lot of decisions. I found the decision space in Into the God's Grave to be very rewarding, to be not, we're not talking about some heavy Euro game, but it was a rewarding enough experience as far as the decision space in the genre of what this game is, which is a partially narrative, uh, partially, you know, a scenario campaign driven experience as you grow up and level, as you go through it and level up. This is going to, again, going to be comparable to games like Destinies, to role play adventures, to Agamonia. It's going to be fitting in that zone. Also to Descent, a bit less combat focused, but the way the app integrates with the game is going to have some of that as well. And so within that range of games, I find the decision space in this game in this first scenario, and it was the first scenario. I don't know how the game will iterate and continue to develop, but that first scenario alone was rewarding. Which also brings me to my first concern that you should be mindful of, which is replayability. I can't speak for you, and I cannot speak for the rest of the game. I can say that the first scenario has multiple ways you can engage with that first scenario, and there are degrees of choices you will make that result in the fact that if you played it again, you could do things differently such that you have a slightly different experience. The key word, though, is going to be slightly. You're not going to have a massively different experience, at least in the first scenario. I cannot speak for the rest of the game at all as far as how it develops. But this first scenario was enjoyable enough that if I had to replay it, if I had to go through it again, let's say you failed the first time, and I don't know, by the way, I don't know if the game is fail forward or not. I do not know the answer there, and that does affect things. I hope it is fail forward. I hope you do not replay lost scenarios. But let's say it's not. Let's say this is a game which you do not fail forward and you have to replay lost scenarios. If I had to play the first scenario again, I would not want to but it wouldn't be the end of the world. It wouldn't be my preference to replay a scenario I just played. I want to explore and see what happens. To me, part of the charm of the game is inherently in the resource management and decisions and the dice rolling and all that, but also a big sense of charm is in the sense of exploration you get in the, in the world around you, in the choices and the progression you're making. This is not a game that in its current form I would play as a one-shot game where I'm just playing the same scenario again and again and again. I don't think there's enough there to keep me invested. It's good. The whole system works. But if it's just about the pure mechanical aspects of the scenario, I don't think I'd continue to play the same one again and again. But I do want to explore the rest. I do want to play through the 10 scenarios. To me, so far, and I, I always am very mindful of saying these things, to me, so far, this has given me the experience that Destinies gives me, but in the cooperative aspect that I always wanted from Destinies. For me, Destinies is a great game, but Destinies as a competitive experience has always been a bit more challenging to get to the table, and it feels like Destinies should be a cooperative experience, and yet it is competitive. It's just that I don't know what it is. I don't know if this is a me issue or not, and I like Destinies, I do, but it feels like it should be cooperative, and yet the cooperative version of the solo version of Destinies doesn't feel quite the same. This, to me has enough story beats as to the pacing and way Destinies is structured, but I like a bunch of things more. Not necessarily everything more, but I like a bunch of things more. The way you explore with points of interest is going to be very reminiscent to Destinies. The way you manage the app and the game is going to be very, very, very reminiscent. The, the style of the way everything's placed down is clearly the same app design and all that, obviously, which is not a problem. It's Lucky Duck Games. But overall, I would say the cooperative sense of adventure is definitely enhanced. I like this game as a solo or cooperative game. I like the, the sense of progression. This, to me, is the kind of thing that's almost a cross between Destinies and Roleplay Adventures and the way you're going to proceed through the engine. I hope there are more, te more than 10 adventures. I hope there are more than 10 adventures in this because so far I very much enjoyed my single play. Again, I say single play because a single play does not a review make. I like my time with Into the God's Grave. I'm enjoying it, and I, I think it's an excellent experience. But it's also a single play. Past that, you're going. You have items. You have skill tests. You have events. I think to me, the main charm of the game is the sense of exploration and everything else that the game runs for you. And the main benefits of it are the cooperative experience. And I think it gives you enough decision space in terms of all the things going on that I've seen so far without even taking into account the way you construct your deck. That's something I'm very interested in doing. I'm very interested in that sense of deck construction and how you're going to build your race between your role and your your species and between all the cards you get along the way. I'm curious to see how that will that will play out. As it stands, though, I like it. Now, the app. It's always worth talking about apps because, to me, Destiny's is a great game. It is a great game, but I still don't like the app. And that's true for Into the God's Grave as well. I wish there wasn't an app. I don't like going back and forth between the table and the app. I've never enjoyed it. I always reluctantly put up with it. And I'm reluctantly putting up with it here, too. The app doesn't doesn't significantly get in the way of my enjoyment, but it's something that you're going back and forth. I'm checking, okay, great, I add a token, I put a tile down, okay, great, then I add a new spot, I put a tile down, and I tap on the enemy and see what the enemy's health is and slide the enemy health there. I'm going back and forth between the experiences in a way that I've always found to be less fun. 
And not to say that the alternative is better. The alternative is often going through a giant flipbook where you're like, okay, open the flipbook, okay, great, the narrative says this, let me do that. And there's often, the trade-off for an app is often either a lot more narrative text and how you manage it with a more um, non-digital format, and then also more rules as you have to deal with things and know things better in the actual rulebook. I still would prefer this as a full-on, complete, non-digital experience. That would absolutely be my preference. But there's the flip side of the fact that a digital experience allows you to do things that a non-digital experience would either be impossible to do or significantly harder. Things like where you explore a point of interest and nothing happens because something else hasn't happened yet. But then you go over here and you explore that point of interest and you come back over here and something changes. The, the changing and evolving world is something that an app certainly makes easier and so I respect why it exists. And it, I will say it does not significantly get in the way of my enjoyment. To me, this is basically Destiny's but cooperative with enough changes that it is not Destiny's. Again, both things are true. Anyone who plays this will see the overlap of Destiny's. And also anyone who plays this will see how it is completely not Destiny's while seeing elements of it in play. I guess as far as final thoughts and Into the God's Grave, and again, first impressions here. here. I'm not going to rate this today. I, I'm not comfortable rating it because, again, one play on this and... I, I think the reason, let me give you this for context. The reason I'm not comfortable rating it is because one play in, I really enjoy it. Like, I really enjoy it, and I would give it a higher rating than I possibly should after one play, so I'm not going to rate it. I'm going to say that I enjoy Into the God's Grave. And right now, if you offered me a choice between this and Destiny's, it wouldn't be a question. I would choose this over Destiny's because it gives me all the things I liked about Destiny's, but it gives it, me to a co it gives it to me in a cooperative system, which I just prefer. I think the trade-offs or the potential benefits that Destiny's has over this to me is you know, not worth the fact that I prefer this as a cooperative game. I prefer going through the adventure and exploring things and working together, and there is working together. There is there's talking with other players, there's managing what you're doing. This is a fun experience as far as how everything weaves together. And I'm excited to see the deck building aspect. I'm excited to see how you can build your character because some cards in your decks over here are okay and I just discard them for the extra dice. Other cards are powerful and strong, and so the ability to craft a deck that works together to make my character feel a certain way, that's fun. I very much enjoyed this game. I very much enjoyed Into the God's Grave, but I also very much enjoyed it with a single scenario under my belt. So just take that into account uh, as you buy it, back it, whatever, all that stuff. And if you're paying attention to this review and the uh, these first impressions far off into the distant future, make sure to check out my channel for a full actual review where I've actually gone through a whole lot more than one scenario and talked about the game because I'm curious to see how this holds up. As it currently stands, I like it, and I want to and I and I want to see more. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, there's going to be, obviously, Destinies. This game has a lot of similarities to Destinies, and I think if you like one, you will probably like the other. Secondly, I'll say this game gives me strong, reminiscent feels of Agamonia. Or is it Agamonia? Agamonia. Agamonia, which is a game that has not yet delivered, but Agamonia is another crowdfunding campaign that gives me a strong similarity in terms of the vibe I got from the two experiences. And then lastly, if you're looking for something a bit more combat-driven with the uh, app-driven system, Descent Journeys into the Dark, Legends of the Dark, Descent, Le Legends of the Dark is going to give you more of a combat-based dungeon crawler with that app-driven integration. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you found this helpful, and as always, I hope you have a good one.